Hey, today I'm going to talk about Marshall Rosenberg's nonviolent communication and how understanding people's feelings and needs and using that in your communication can massively improve all of your relationships. So I'm going to go into the importance of understanding feelings and needs and how to use them. And then I'm going to share a five step formula which can drastically improve your chances of having communication and conversations with people where you both feel heard, understood and respected. So welcome to The Power of Helping. My name's Ruben Wax and I'm a trainee counsellor and I'm passionate about improving people's lives so that they then can be in a better place to empower and support the people around them. Communication is one of those skills which is quite vague and hard to put a finger on and it's quite hard to think, I'm just gonna go out and improve my communication skills. But I'd wager that there's pretty much no part of your life that wouldn't massively benefit from better communication, whether that be with your family, your friends, in your relationship, with your clients, your colleagues, or someone that you're supporting. So the central idea of nonviolent communication is that without us really knowing, there's a lot of violence in the way that we talk with others and ourselves. And that comes in the form of blaming, judging, criticizing, demanding, labeling, just to name a few. And when we speak in those ways, we can end up alienating others and ourselves as well. So Marshall Rosenberg created nonviolent communication to show us that no two needs are ever in conflict, but what's in conflict are the strategies that we use to get those needs met. But you see, Rosenberg explains that one of the biggest barriers for us having good communication with each other is that instead of playing the game, let's make life more wonderful for each other, we play the game, who's right? And I mean, I don't know if you know this game, but I feel like I'm highly qualified in that game. But it's taken nonviolent communication to make me realize how much difficulty we cause ourselves by playing this game. And I'd say quite confidently that the thing that's improved my communication skills the most and has allowed me to connect with people more empathically is the ability to communicate through feelings and needs. Okay, so let's get into understanding needs. And the main concept is that behind every action we take, we do that action so that we can get a need met. For example, if you've got a parent who's shouting, that's because they have a need to be heard. Or if you've got someone who's going to work every day and they're working really hard, that could be sure to fill the basic needs of food and shelter, but they could also be working really hard to fulfill the need of being valued and seen and have a sense of purpose. And as humans, we all have the same needs, whether that's autonomy, feeling safe, connection, feeling like we belong, some sort of community, feeling valued, seen, having a sense of purpose. All of these types of needs, we all have them, but we've all been educated in slightly different ways to get those needs met. So if you've got, for example, a teenager who needs attention, like all of us, they might do something rebellious to get that attention. Whereas you've got another teenager who might work incredibly hard to get good exam results to also get attention. And nothing is good or bad. It's all just different ways of getting particular needs met. And so why needs are so powerful when it comes to connecting with people and having conversations is because when you understand that every action that someone takes or everything that someone says to you is to fill a need, it allows you to connect with the root cause, the root reason that they're doing that thing or saying that thing to you. And when you do that, when you meet them at their need, you come to a resolution so much faster than just guessing at what they really want. Now, an easy framework to have with you when you're thinking about needs is that Marsha Rosenberg explains that people are always saying one of two things. They're either saying thank you, they're expressing gratitude, or they're saying, please, please can I get a need met? Now, if you catch yourself thinking, what could possibly be the need of this action? Or why, why did they say that thing? We've got to remember that a lot of the time, those are just futile attempts at trying to get those needs met. So if you've got a boss that comes over and shouts, you're not working fast enough on this project, your defenses might rise and think, what do they ever do on the project? But what they could be needing underneath that futile attempt is just to have some reassurance that that project's gonna be done on time because who knows, they could be being shouted at by their bosses. They feel scared that their, their job's under threat. So having the ability to look at what their action is, which is shouting at you, which is not very great, and thinking, what is the need beneath that? It's reassurance. I can give them that 
and that's gonna settle them so much quicker than me kicking off back at them and telling them that they also don't do anything in the project. So one thing I'll do when I'm going into a conversation, which I know is gonna be a little bit more challenging, is I say to myself, hear the please, hear the please in what they're saying. So when they do say something to me, maybe out of defense, I'll reframe what they've said and imagine they've said to me, please can I get a need met? And why this is so useful is because then when I look at how they're feeling, whether they're upset or they're angry, and then I take what they've said, instead of acting defensively, I can just imagine that they're saying, please can I get a need met? I can meet them there at that need and then we can resolve the issue so much quicker. And in theory, every conflict is resolved when you've actually just got the person's needs met. And so one great lesson I've really internalized from nonviolent communication is there's so much power in just asking for what you need. Sometimes we get a real rising of emotions from a certain situation or something someone said to us and then we reply off the cuff or we send an email back straight away or we reply on text or whatever it is but it can really be so helpful sometimes just to take stock of what am I feeling and what's the need behind that feeling? I'm feeling angry or I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling upset, but what need of mine is behind that? And then when you can go to that person and just express that need, it's gonna be so much easier for that person to clearly know what you're needing. And so when I start, let's say a new job or a new course, I'll often say to the person who's leading it, whether that be my manager or my tutor, and I'll say to them, I have a real need for reassurance. I, I'm an overthinker, so if I don't hear anything from you for quite a while, I'll start wondering whether I'm doing something wrong. So what I need as someone who's your student or as your worker or whatever it is, I just need that reassurance every so often, just that pat on the back to let, let me know that I'm on the right track and I'm doing okay. Just letting them know what I need and it just makes for such clear communication and then I get my need met and it, all I did was ask for it. And I'd also love to know, what do you find most challenging when it comes to communication? Is it your body language? Is it your tone of voice? Is it using the correct language? Whatever it is, let me know below because then I can make some videos on those different topics. And if you're new here, then hit the subscribe button and you'll know when the videos come out. And so let's actually get into this five-step formula now where you get to put your understanding of needs into this formula which you can bring into any communication where if you do that, you're gonna end up having a much higher chance of getting an empathic response back where they really understand you and where you're coming from and where you both feel heard, understood and respected. And so this five-step formula you can bring into any conversation and the order is you express empathy for what they're going through, you make a specific observation of what they're doing, you express your feelings, you tell them your needs, and then you make a request. So I'm gonna give an example of how a conversation might potentially go wrong, and then we're gonna go through each step of the process, and I'm gonna explain why they're so useful, and then we're gonna put that example into that formula, and at the end, what we're gonna have is a much better and effective way of communicating that need that that person was trying to get met. Okay, so for this example, we're gonna say we're in an office, and one of the workers is coming in, and they've been late three times that week, and the manager's getting more and more frustrated with this. So that person might come in, and the manager might say, oh, you're always late. And so in response to that, the person's defenses are just gonna go up because they're gonna think unconsciously, wait, have I always been late? Am I late every time now? And will I forever be late? So they might reply with, oh, I'm really sorry. But really they're just gonna be thinking, this person just made a massive judgment of me and they don't get what I'm going through. And so that futile expression of an unmet need from that manager gets met with, criticism, judgment, and anger back from that person. And so the aim of using a formula like this is just to increase your chances of getting an empathic response back where they understand where you're coming from. Okay, and so the first step is empathy. And this is one of those steps that which is so regularly overlooked by people, but is so powerful when you use it. And what empathy is, is you expressing an attempt to understand what they're going through. So in this example, the manager could say, hey, I know that you're going through a lot at the moment and it's a really stressful time for you. And at least at that point, that person's gonna feel like this person is getting me somewhat. So if you're gonna express an observation of something that they're doing, then it's really important just to be as specific as you possibly can because that stops their defenses rising. If you say something like, you're always late, that's just incorrect. So if you express, hey, you've been late three times this week, as much as they might be feeling mildly under attack, 
At least you're not saying something that's wrong. They can't argue with what you've said. And now we get onto feelings. And this is probably the hardest step of the lot because it's not often that we feel comfortable expressing how we feel. Or sometimes when we express our feelings, we use them in a judgmental way or in a guilty way where we say, I feel this way because you, or you make me feel. But when someone hears that, they're just gonna hear it as a criticism. So the best thing you can do is talk from your perspective. And so the best way to express it from your perspective is firstly, don't talk about anyone else because you don't really 100% know how it's affecting others. But also if you talk about your feeling as a result of you not having a need met, it's gonna be received as less critical. And so if we go back to the example, the manager could have expressed it as something like, I'm feeling frustrated and I'm feeling upset because my need for feeling like my time is worthwhile and my time is respected, it's not being met. And instead of hearing, you're causing me to feel this way and you're always late, they're gonna hear, how is this person feeling? Which means they're gonna be able to connect with them and then they're gonna understand why they feel that way and it's because a particular need of theirs isn't being met. And that's gonna result in a lot higher chance of this colleague responding in an empathic way where they understand what this manager is going through. And so the key here is to say that specific observation of what they're doing, say your feeling, but then relate your feeling to your need and not to the thing that they're doing. And in that way, it's not gonna be heard as a criticism. It's gonna be heard as you expressing the fact that you're just not having one of your needs met and that's why you're feeling upset. Then you've brought in your need and they at least can understand what you're trying to get out of this conversation. And they can then hopefully meet that need going forward. And so then the last step is to make a request. And what you wanna do is make an action request. Ask for them to do something because you can't ask them to be more something. You don't wanna ask them to feel more of anything. You wanna ask them to do something and then they have a clear example of what they should do. And it's also really important to ask them to do something and don't ask them to stop doing something. Don't say don't do that because it's so much clearer to the person what you actually want. Let's say you tell your housemate, please stop leaving the dishes in the sink and then they start leaving them on the counter, when really what you wanted is for them to wash up the dishes after they cook. So it's so much better to clearly say, could you please wash up the dishes once you've cooked and eaten? So next time you're gonna talk to someone and you really wanna express something to them, try bringing in as many of these parts of the formula as you can, and if possible, in this order. And as a result, you'll have a much higher chance of getting an empathic response back where you both feel heard, understood, and respected. And on top of that, it can be really beneficial to all of your relationships in your life if you can start communicating through feelings and needs. So thank you so much for watching The Power of Helping. If you enjoyed the video and you got some value from it, then please feel free to hit the like and the subscribe button. And next week's gonna be about morning routines and what that can do to improve your life. So thank you so much and I'll see you then.